Hello and welcome to Money Live News and Views. I am Devashish Basu. Last week, the government announced a taxpayer's charter, which lists the rights of assessees under the Income Tax Act. The charter is a bunch of promises, full of homilies like the vision statements of corporate houses. It says that the department is committed to provide prompt, courteous and professional assistance, treat taxpayers as honest, provide mechanism for appeal, respect the privacy of the taxpayer, follow due process of law, should be no more intrusive than necessary and so on. How does all of these promises square with the reality on the ground? Let's go back to this quote. The tax terrorism prevailing in the country is dangerous. One can't run the government by thinking that everyone is a thief. Guess who said that and when? This was said by Mr. Narendra Modi before he was the prime, became the Prime Minister speaking to a businessman in 2014. The moment he came to power, the government started issuing strange demand notices and changing tax laws to make them more draconian and worse with retrospective effect. When people started complaining about tax terrorism, the finance minister, late Arun Jetli, resorted to misdirection. He said, the opposite of tax terror cannot be tax heaven. Sounding exactly like former finance ministers Pranab Mukherjee and P. Chidambaram, Mr. Jaitley thundered the government would not let go of what it sees as its legitimate tax demands. Now, who was going to decide what was legitimate? Take, for instance, this example. India slapped tax notices at that time, four or five years ago, on foreign institutional investors under what is called the minimum alternate tax, when that action perversely overrode the benefits given to foreign entities under the country's bilateral tax treaties. India became a laughing stock of the world's business and financial community in its pursuit of what it thought was legitimate tax demands. The pre-election promise of Mr. Modi to end tax terrorism sounded like a cruel joke and since then it has got worse every year. Under section 132 and 132A of Income Tax Act, the department can conduct a search and seizure popularly called RAID. In 2017, these sections were amended. Now, the department can raid you if it has reasons to believe or reasons to suspect, but does not have to disclose the reason to any authority, even the appellate tribunal. For this, Section 132.1 was amended retrospectively from 1st April 1962 and Section 132.1a from 1st October 1975. Is this just fair, accountable system that the Charter is talking about? Now, also, under Section 276 CC, failing to file a tax return on time attracts rigorous imprisonment for six months to seven years plus a fine if the tax amount is more than a lakh of rupees. Now, this imprisonment section is attracted even if the taxpayer has paid up the tax amount due on his own, including penalty. Is this a just and fair system that the Charter promises to jail a late filer who is clearly not a tax evader? Another tax law, that is GST, the Goods and Services Tax, imposes criminal penalties for simple mistakes to frauds. GST commissioners can arrest people without registering an FIR and businessmen do not have the option of an anticipatory bail. These and many other punitive sections were introduced by the Modi government to burnish its anti-corruption image. As tax terrorism increased sharply over the last six years, more and more people started complaining. Among them was T. Mohandas Pai, ex-CFO of Infosys and a die-hard fan of this regime. He was driven to bitterly complain that the government has failed to protect citizens and business from the tax system that has run amok with a broken assessment system and a broken appeal system. No major country has both broken. Tax officials seem to think of everybody as evaders, exactly what Mr. Modi said before he became the PM, and themselves as vigilantes. We have filed returns in over 30 countries, but no country treats taxpayers as badly as India does. M. R. Venkatesh, another practicing chartered accountant, said it is not tax, tax terrorism, he calls it tax jihadism. 
those of us who handle the income tax department or the GST or the customs or the excise department on a daily basis can see the kind of powers given to the officers today, says he, but with no accountability and they have gone berserk. What was the government's response to all of these criticisms? PM Modi told a business paper last year, it is a fact that some black sheep in tax administration may have misused their powers and harassed taxpayers, either by targeting honest assesses or by taking excessive action for minor or procedural violations. I have instructed them to ensure that honest taxpayers are not harassed and those who commit minor or procedural violations are not subject to dis disproportionate or excessive action. This is a very strange advice. Now, on one hand, we will have really harsh, draconian, punitive rules and regulations, but then the officials are supposed to use such tough rules and regulations in applying them. In fact, they are not even supposed to use discretion and they usually don't. Tax harassment cannot ever reduce in India because the tax department is given stiff revenue targets year after year to feed the monster of a big government. Former Finance Minister P. Chidambaram was notorious for setting difficult targets and thereby unleashing tax terrorism that Mr. Modi talked about. This government is even more focused and determined in this respect. I am told there are even targets for issue, issuing prosecution notices and other penal provisions which are monitored weekly by New Delhi. To sum up, under this government, tax laws have become more draconian. The government itself is setting stiff, unrealistic tax tar targets for its officials who have got more powers to harass us. And so, the department's attitude as a whole is more and more punitive and tax terrorism has increased. The Taxpayers Charter is the latest addition to the long list of slogans, coinages, memes, false promises and insincere announcement that all governments excel in. Thanks for watching.